Hi, John Clements for the UMass Video Fruit Advisor. Today is uh, Monday, June 27th, 2011. And I'm looking here quickly at a uh, uh, second leaf uh, super spindle axe planting of uh, uh, dwarf sweet cherries. Uh, these are Rainier on uh, Gisela 3 rootstock. You can see some of the fruit there. Um, these uh, Rainier have a pretty nice crop load. I've been struggling a little bit to keep the birds out of it, but uh, nice trees, and uh, these really have to be covered up to prevent from rain cracking. There is some cracking already. Should be harvesting these in about a week. Um, but those are the Rainier on Gisela 3. And you can see where the fruit is being born right here along the, uh, the axis of the tree and at the base of uh, One Year Wood. And these are uh, Skeena on Gisela 3 also. A little more variable growth. I'll tell you, those Rainiers have looked really good. Um, some trees have quite a bit of fruit. Others don't have that much. These Skeenas, um, I've never cropped them before. I don't know, the fruit in some cases has some spotting on it. It's been a rough year here in the east for cherries. But uh, I'm not sure when these are picked. I have to look that up. But judging the size and uh, firmness of the uh, cherry it's it's not for a little while and this one is a uh, skeena and it's a yellow cherry with a red blush unless it really darkens up but overall the trees look pretty good again these all come in and, and prune I think I'm going to hedge them after uh, after harvest with a hedger and uh, we'll see if that works but uh, and you can see the trees are planted these cherry trees are planted two feet apart then we have Benton on Gisela 5. Um, it's kind of interesting. I guess I really never made the connection, but looking at these Gisela 5 trees, they clearly look bigger than the Gisela 3. I'm guessing or assuming the Gisela 3 is the less vigorous tree. Off the top of my head, um, might be the best uh, uh, variety for this system. The Gisela 3s also have a lot more fruit on it. I'm not sure if that's a rootstock effect or a variety effect. But uh, these, um, these Benton really don't have any fruit on them. They might be getting close to being ready to pick. I see the birds have been in them pretty good. This looks like a, uh, a dark red cherry. Um, I'm not sure if they're ready yet. No, a little firm still. So that's Benton on Gisela 5. A bigger, uh, bigger, uh, bigger tree at least at this point. We'll see how that goes down the road. Then I've got a group here of uh, Regina on, on Gisela 5 that were planted this year. So the trees we just looked at were two years old. These just went in the ground this spring, showing some pretty good growth. Um, Regina is perhaps one of the better cherries for our for our area, but uh, obviously don't have any fruit on these. And again, at some point in time, uh, middle of the summer, I'm going to come in and, and, and cut all these, uh, this, this, this season's shoot growth laterals back. And then we'll have cropping next year, uh, both along the older wood and also at the base of these one-year shoots. But uh, we can't let these continue to grow out. They've got to be trimmed back at some point in time here during the summer. And again, I think I'll do that with an electric hedge trimmer. Just uh, come right through here and trim them back. So John Clements for the UMass Fruit Advisor. Uh, looking at a second and first leaf dwarf cherry planting here at the UMass Cold Spring Orchard on a nice day. Have a good one. We'll visit again.